In this tutorial, we will learn how to display a water flow through a pipe, including a knob or a valve. We will create this pipe system using Blender, almost entirely with geometry nodes, and you can download the required blend file from the links given below. So we'll start with Blender, and first delete this default cube. We can create a pipe system using a curve, so let's add a path, to start with, and switch over to the edit mode. We can see that there are five control points already created for this default path, and we'll create our pipe like this. So first select this last control point, and press E to extrude, then press Z, enter number 1, and hit enter, and we can do it one more time. Then if we want to extrude the pipe in this direction, press E, and then X, enter number 1, and hit enter, and let's extrude it a little bit more, in the same direction. So our example curve is ready, you can also make a longer pipe. Then go to this curve tab, and under the section called geometry, we have to go to this bevel section, and if we enter say point 2, we'll get a pipe created from our curve. Now let's go back to the object mode, but our main job is still pending. We want some water to flow through this pipe, and we also want to cut on this pipe, so that we can see through, as the water makes progress inside. So let's first take out this bevel completely, we will rather create everything using some geometry nodes for this curve object, so let's open the geometry nodes editor. Now click on this new button, and we have to create a geometry node tree, like this. You can take a screenshot here, and recreate this exact node tree for the pipe system. We can see that there is a join geometry node, that connects this lower branch, which is creating the main pipe, and this upper branch, which is creating the water that runs through the pipe. Then we also have two set material nodes here, and we need two different materials for these two nodes. So let's go to the Materials tab, and create our first material. This will be used for the pipe or the outer part, so let's rename this to say Pipe Material. Then add another slot, and create the second material. You can change this color, maybe to blue, because it will form the water inside the pipe, and we'll also rename this to Water Material. Now this branch is creating the water, so in this node, we have to select the water material, and here we'll select the pipe material since this branch is responsible for the pipe section. So let's go back to the viewport, and we can turn on the rendered view as well. As you can see here, we have a small cut made on our pipe, we can see the inside part of the pipe, but let's also open the geometry nodes right here. We will explain the primary nodes, you can then customize this node tree as per your choice, it's really important for you to understand how the things actually work. First the opening or the cut on this pipe is created by this trim curve node. If we change this end value to 1, we will get a solid pipe, without any cut, so if we want a cut, we need to reduce this end value. We can either do this by a visual adjustment, or let's say if we want a 1 8 cut, we can simply enter 7 by 8. And if the position of this cut is not matching your requirement, you can adjust the zero rotation angle, in this transform geometry node. As you change this, you'll see that the position or the orientation of the cut is also changing along the circumference of the pipe. Then you can change the size of this pipe by changing the radius in this curved circle node. As you slowly change this, the size of the pipe will increase or decrease, so you can go for 0.2 or whatever you like, but based on this value, you need to also set a suitable radius here as it controls the thickness of the water stream inside the pipe. So we have set it as 0.19 just a little bit smaller than the radius of the pipe. And to get the actual flow of the water along the pipe, we have to animate this end value here, in this trim curve node. If we slowly increase this value, the water will start flowing through the pipe, so to start with, let's give it a very low value, like 0 .001. You can make it zero as well, but the orientation may not look good. Now, we'll open the timeline here, and for frame number one, we need to insert a keyframe for this initial value. Then let's say we change it to frame number 100, and we'll also change this value all the way up to 1, and like before, we need to keyframe this. Now, if we run this animation from the beginning, we'll see that the water runs through the pipe till the end, and it's easily visible through the gap. Then let's say we have a valve in our pipe, that operates between frame number 60 and 90, and we want the water to stop at this point until the valve opens completely. So let's go to frame number 1, we need to open our geometry nodes, as we need to make some changes. First remove all the keyframes for this field, then we need to insert a single keyframe for this first frame. Then we'll go to frame number 60, that's when the valve starts opening. We'll now change this value, 
so that the water reaches only up to the valve. You can fine-tune this number by experiment, and we need to keyframe this as usual. Now, let's play the animation for the valve, and pause it when the valve stops, which happens at frame number 90. We will insert another keyframe at this point, and then from here, let's go to 60 frames down the line. Now we will change the value of this end field to 1, and we need to make a final keyframe here. If we now play the animation, we'll see that the water flows through the pipe, up to the valve, and then it stops. Once the valve opens, the water starts running again, and it will go to the end point or to the next stop, as you design it. You can create a more complex pipe system, you can even add multiple flows, or add more control points like separators or aggregators, using the same technique. So I hope you like this tutorial, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.